In the year 277 BC King Dotos, High Chief of the Getai, after forcefully uniting all of the South Dacians, shifted his attention to the northeastern parts of Dacia, fueled by gruesome stories of Celts oppressing local Dacians. In a somewhat naive move, an ultimatum was sent to the ruling Celtic elite of that region. Leave or die, an ultimatum soon to be enforced by a South Dacian Liberation Army crossing the border. The Northeasterners, a confederation of Celtic, Germanic, Carpi and Dacian tribes calling themselves the Bastanos, did not sit idly. One of their chieftain, Dacios, organized a 3,000-men strong army, formed from all the local tribes, even Dacians, an army determined to stop King Dotos' aggressive invasion. Dacios' army had the terrain know how to manage an ambush almost as soon as King Dotos crossed the border. But the gods were not on the Bastanos' side. King Dotos smashed Dacios' ambush, killed and enslaved most of the Bastanos' army. After suffering heavy casualties in the ambush, many men would go back home to regroup. Not King Dotos, he decided to pursue the leftovers of Dacios' army and put an end to an army that almost managed to put an end to his ambitions. Little did King Dotos know, that one of the fleeing soldiers had a religious revelation during the flight. Tazgetios claimed to have been visited by a local forest nymph, who promised him victory as long as he will have faith in her protection and fight naked. Tazgetios managed to both rally the remnant of Dacios' brazen bear's army, but also to call for reinforcements from the town of Petrodava. Many Bastanos townsfolk, Celtic hunters and loyal local Dacians flocked to Tazgetio's aid in defense of their homeland. Once again King Dotos and his South Dacian Liberation Army find themselves outnumbered, this time deep in enemy territory. Will the gods favor Dotos again? Or was he a victim of hubris? Tazgetios heaven mad after the failed ambush at the border said Heva touched by a forest spirit and took off his clothes, others did the same. What was left of the armies for allegiance to him soon after, former Bastrnos soldier, current quarry slay. They marched there in the open, far ahead of their mind force, naked. ESRB the Royal Cavalry to the left and the Light Horsemen to the right. No signals had to be given. All three horse regiments were charging at them. Those madmen didn't break. We had to pull off before the rest of the army were upon us, Cortizo, captain of the Kingslayer's mercenary cavalry band. Welcome to the seventh installment of Let's Get It On. I got a new mic, so you can clearly notice how I mispronounce the word cavalry. And just my luck, I got a cold, so you can also pick up on my running nose. Cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are at the outskirts of Petrodava, where King Dotos caught up to the Brazen Bear army. Here we are looking at our main cavalry force. Their main mission will be to harass the actual uh, remnants of the Brazen Bear army while the main army force will try to intercept the enemy reinforcements. And here we are, this is the main force, uh, the formation is archers up front, some uh, loosey-goosey formation so we can uh, try and be more maneuverable with the Malva line, well, what's left of it, patched up by some uh, axemen and of course our f folksmen at the extreme flanks and the youth just uh, with their speed 4 uh, they could really really react fast for everything so they're at the back we will start the battle by following our main cavalry line where I be break one of my uh, main rules of using cavalry safety and sending them into the forest where they get stuck on trees but hopefully it will help us not to get noticed by the main the main enemy army. Here they are in their full glory, the naked men of Petrodava. Well I guess in our head cannon one of the fleeing men got a religious experience here in the forest. Hallucinated some kind of a wooden nymph promising him protection 
if he just take off all his clothes and fight naked. So that's what he did. And soon our man will show up and give us a master class in baiting an enemy army. First you ride hard towards the enemy and then you hurl at them your long shafts. After you make contact you stop and run away towards the woods. But don't forget yet to give them a parting gift. And uh, this little maneuver actually worked better than I planned. The enemy cavalry decided to, to engage. And since they thought there is only one light cavalry, uh, they, they, I guess, died to regret their decision. Because this is a, a trap. Soon our heavy cavalry, well, heavy, heavy for us, heavy for us station. engage them and they have no chance of winning this not only that I will also uh, do the sneaky sneak and attack them from the behind with the rest of the cavalry and that was the end of the enemy cavalry and I think our uh, baiting class our master baiting class is, uh, is done but since we are learning let's uh, let's study a new language and today we will learn a bit of uh, svenska a bit of swedish uh, one word made of two words how do you say machine in swedish machine how do you say time in Swedish? T. So let's all hop on the Tits machine and go back in T and check out the other flank. Well, I hope you had a good ride on the Tits machine. And welcome to the past. This is just where the battle started, and this is the main army really trying to catch up with the enemy reinforcements. Here is the enemy army. They have uh, a lot of uh, spearmen, I think these are the Celto Germanic spearmen, some bowmen, and they even have some more Dacian traitors. And I want us to follow this particular unit in particular because they are uh, geniuses. They decided because uh, the, the main enemy army is uh, starting to shoot at them that they should uh, stop their march towards joining with uh, the main force to one big cohesive army start uh, exchanging volleys with the enemy archers. Yeah, this is here are some, some geniuses. Hey, hey, here's, here's the enemy. Let's just stop and uh, shoot at them. What's the worst that could happen? Here there are, I always saw two three horses going into the ravine. Well, they weren't that that many. Oh, okay. Maybe they were more than uh, than we thought. Oh, oh, yeah. That that was a a good decision. We should run away. So this is our king from his uh, point of view. Kind of, uh, you know, maybe having a second thought about chasing the enemy army since there is so much reinforcements but you know we come we came all the way over here so we should uh, give it our best shot so again we are uh, scouting with our king basically 
and uh, oh my god, they're actually shooting at us. That's that's rude. And I think we should uh, teach those really, really rude bastards a lesson or two about shooting at a king. Fellow riders, this is your king speaking. Please gallop your horse at running speed. We will be making contact with the enemy shortly. Please lower your spears and embrace for impact. A friendly reminder, in case of any sharp objects embedded in your horse, please do not get off your horse. I repeat, do not get off your horse. And as always, that guy. Nasty death. Now we are just trying to form a, a cohesive line to face the enemy forces. Here are our youths taking some uh, pot shots. Got some spears who decided to try and uh, chase cavalry, which is always a good idea. I mean, why wouldn't you, on foot, be able to catch up uh, someone on a horse? So we are basically just trying to sow uh, uh, confusion and chaos between the uh, two enemy forces. Just trying to circle and snipe a few vulnerable units like here, where uh, our king again has uh, managed to, to get to some vulnerable archers. And I think the other cavalry will also be joining us soon. Here we noticed we are in a small uh, predicament since there's a small patch of woods just between us and the main uh, enemy force. So we are slowly repositioning our uh, archer units more to the left and hiding some uh, units in the forest. And they're actually managing to bait enemy archer fire, which is uh, really good for us because the enemy hasn't got a lot of archers left and these units they have shields and they're in the forest which also provides some uh, covering fire and we decided to use the same uh, small patch of forest as cover for our folksmen our really vulnerable folksmen and after our cavalry we do some more uh, uh, spreading of chaos and mayhem we will actually charge with them so let us join the charge. I really like the the hats. They look like some uh, really angry smurfs. Like that D&D uh, &D unit, the red caps. If anyone is familiar, leave a comment. <laughs> so yeah, hi ho, hi ho, off to slay we go, hi ho, hi ho. Off to slay we go. Really, this is the the fastest you are charging. This is like uh, not even light jogging. Okay, now they mean business. Yes, charge! Here we are just uh, taking down all of the enemy archers. We only had three units of archers. We got one in the in the beginning, and I don't think they they will be coming back. And this was the second, and now we are uh, charging the third. And this was a big priority for us because our uh, folksmen are really vulnerable to any kind of missile fire. Oh yeah, and I think I, I here I baited again with the cavalry and tried to uh, stop the spearmen from charging the king. Oh, and actually they had a fourth unit. These are uh, these are some uh, veteran uh, brazen bear archers, but I also managed to 
uh, spot them and charge with the... I think these are the mercenaries. And it was at this point that I think I noticed the enemy general, the, the naked man, uh, basically in the middle of the battlefield, totally alone, surrounded by uh, three of my uh, cavalry unit. So I tried to do a uh, pincer movement. Try to really get him off the field since uh, if the enemy general is dead, the enemy gets a lot of uh, penalties. And and we are about to learn about the importance of high morale. This is a really high morale unit, and they are getting pounded in uh, soon to be three sides by cavalry, and they don't budge. I was expecting them to, to break, but here the enemy army is almost upon us and we, we can't really stand and fight. Here is the, the third cavalry regiment and these are the light horse and they are getting uh, the, the, the sliced, hacked and sliced and I think we, will, we lost more men than we killed. This was uh, really bad despite being... Uh, tactically a sound move but at least uh, he, he retreated a bit with uh, with his men <coughs> <coughs> sorry he retreated a bit with his men behind the behind his line and here the the second part of the of the battle starts this is after most of our units were uh, already engaged and we are a bit tired because uh, we fought uh, more than a, a small skirmish and this is when the the main brazen bear army and the reinforcement that managed to make contact with them are engaging us and then this is basically when the real fight starts while we waited I took this opportunity to give some of my cavalry some uh, well-earned rest uh, since we were you know the positions were uh, somewhat dictated to us, we couldn't really do much other than uh, just counter charge the enemy. We are using our archers to take down the treacherous uh, folksmen, and in general we're trying to do our best to flank the enemy, because that's our major uh, advantage that we have, is uh, light armor Dacians. And since we are so badly outnumbered here, uh, King Dotos is doing a Hail Mary, really charging into the rear of the traitorous folksmen. And I'm using the some somewhat arcade ability to inspire and rally the men to fight harder. Uh, I think this is one of the maneuvers that really helped us win this. Spoiler alert! and some heavy fighting all around especially on this on this uh, side this is our unit of X that we will spoiler alert sadly lose they got uh, pinned down by some uh, I think Celtic Germanic uh, not just Celtic tribesmen they got pinned down they, sh they Normally they would be able to win this engagement, I think. But since they took so many casualties in the earlier engagement, and they're tired, and now they are getting engaged by the enemy general, those fanatical naked men, we really make short work of them. And this will be our first uh, total unit wipe. The end of the battle was really anticlimactic. I guess it was uh, just a combination of uh, exhaustion and casualty sustained but suddenly despite the enemy army actually winning on some fronts they, they, they just collapsed as an army and then retreated so let's end the fight on some uh, nice slaughter of naked men 
Next time, a nymph in the forest talks to you and promises you victory if you fight naked. Just ignore her. <laughs> Welcome once again to the best part of these videos, the showing of the numbers. As noted during the battle, we suffered our first ever complete unit wipe. Judging by the lack of pips, it's the OG unit of X-Men, one of the three regiments King Dottos had when we started this uh, campaign. Fills aside, if we are being honest, they never truly distinguished themselves and never even got a promotion. Still it was just bad luck, someone had to try and hold the right flank and face those damn psycho naked men. The MVP of the battle was the king himself with 445 kills and some nice maneuvering on his part, especially with that uh, Hail Mary to rally and inspire the men. The flex men also excelled, picking up more kills than the cavalry units. The youths also picked up more kills than all the other archer units and they also got involved in some melee at the end we only lost 299 men which is uh, not bad uh, 20 due to friendly fire sadly at least 500 men managed to escape which means we probably didn't get Perendava as well with this fight and they will try to stop us once again let them try